Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today, we have three illustrious individuals who are very, very known in the Malaysian real estate scene. We have Mr. Soma Sundram, the CEO of Malaysia's Institute of Estate Agents, or MIEA. We have Mr. Fu Gijen, who is the Managing Director of CBRE WTW. And Mr. Ui Boon Siong, who is the CEO of ODNA, which is Ui Designs and Associates. Thank you so much for joining us today, gentlemen. Now, today we are actually in the midst of the CMCO. We have actually been under the MCO for more than 50 days already. I see from some of your backgrounds, you guys are at work. So I guess some of you have been returning to work already. I just wanted to get a very quick feel as to how this MCO and CMCO has been affecting you yourself your, and your business. Um, can we start with Mr. Ui first? Okay, I think for the, because as a interior designers, uh, we have a project, some is ongoing on construction, there's a halfway renovation. That's of course with the MCO, that's we can't continue working. Only we can do is basically all on design part, that's uh, we done in the studio, but uh, for the, during the MCO time, basically we work from home, we start to adapt to the new method of working by Zoom meeting and all other platform on the video conferencing and uh, yeah, we, we still make uh, every day uh, as productive as possible and uh, for designing parts, uh, I think there are no issue, I think we are quite used to it and I, in future, I think we were, we were still practicing the, the last manpower in the office you know, until everything is very stable. Even until to, we are starting business, only 50%, we divide to two groups. That's uh, they take alternate day to come to office to get catch up, print out, and whatever. And most of meeting our clients, we are trying to do online. And uh, really, no choice, only we also limit to the visitor to our office uh, with the, all the precautions that we, we do for the face to face meeting. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Fu, yourself? Okay. This, uh the MCO, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the experience that is a, a, a wake-up call for, for me, uh, even for my organization. I think we have, during this period, have uh, looked back into how inefficient we have really spent our time. And uh, I find it I'm a, a bit more busier when I'm at home. Uh, to work from home experience, I think that's uh, we have been cutting down a lot of traveling time, uh, so called small talk time, and so forth. And all the time has been used for really very, very efficient and effective. Uh, therefore, I think uh, to me, when I say wake up, uh, when we go back to the office uh, last Monday on the 4th, uh, we find that uh, a lot more things can be done uh, via. Uh, what we are doing now and uh, a lot more efficient a lot of time and effort can be put in more productive ways so uh, it's an experience and a uh, time for uh, uh, real into how we do things uh, in the new norm Mr. Soma yourself how is it affecting you? Actually uh, uh, it, it, it affected me in different way. I worked harder. I think as what Fujian said, we worked harder. We went longer hours. I used to put in like from 9 o'clock right up to 11, getting so many things done, you know, because we did our webinars. But I think uh, as what has been said uh, by many, it was a time for us to take stock. It was like a reset button, no? Uh, everything everything stopped for for 50 days. Uh, we, we look back at what we did. Uh, everyone was affected. And I think it was a time of reflection whether we were inefficient, whether we were productive, whether our attitudes were right, whether we were doing the right thing. So it was really more of a time of a reflection uh, of ourselves and, and what we are doing in our lives. Uh, and of course, uh, of course, also related to work. Uh, I think we also learn a lot about work, uh, whether we, uh, as what uh, Fujian said, whether we are really uh, uh, efficient, we are doing the right things right way. Could there be, would there be a better way of having things done? Uh, but there are a lot of answers to all those questions, but this was a reflection that we went through. Um, and so, uh, I think I, I'm back now to work last Monday and uh, it seems to me everything is the same. Uh, I'm doing the same things that I came, uh, what I was doing. Uh, you go to the supermarket, the only thing in the supermarket is you queue up now because if you don't queue up, they won't allow you in. But once you go in, you're fighting for the same chicken and for the same fish because there's limited stock. Nobody cares about COVID. Only thing difference now is 
to me ah huh? i wear my uh, my mask uh, i sanitize every time i go probably that's a, that's a major difference in my life but i think everything else is okay of course people are not as sociable as before we we tend to be ourselves we don't know who we are talking to if you wear your mask and come in front of me i wouldn't know who the hell you are so so this this is uh, these are some of the things that affected but i i believe uh, as far as work is concerned it's it's gone back but a lot of things have changed and so we need to keep up with those changes that has happened and there are, there are a lot of things that we could say great Gentlemen, how I'm going to ask you guys to break this afternoon's conversation apart is that I would like to actually get uh, perhaps a very real estate residential perspective from Mr. Soma, an industrial slash office uh, retail viewpoint from Mr. Fu, and enveloping it is actually the design that needs to go into all three for what probably would be the new normal moving forward. So can we start with say Mr. Soma on in terms of the residential overhang? and in terms of the residential units that are being built and how does covid affect them now and in the future how does this uh, problem how do these problems get overcome could you share that with us uh, of course that that story is a broad over story uh, uh, pre covid eh? uh, before the cmo okay, the, the mco came out we already were talking about the over supply the residential market of course then was a, it was a total stop eh? it was a zero rise kind of transaction nothing has happened over the last 50 days uh, only the last monday people started going out into the fields transactions were happening so uh, but i would like to recall back what happened last in the last few years because that that's a, to to recall back it's important to talk about what's going to happen in the future as we all know way back in 201112 we had 427000 transactions approximately i'm not going to specific 427000 transactions commercial industrial everything put together 2017 it went down right up to 2017 we saw uh, up to 311000 transaction that was right at the bottom of the pit then in 2018 we saw 313000 transaction there was a slight increase and 2019 it went up again to 328000 transactions so when you look at the transactions the market came right, right down to the pit and it started picking up in 2018 2019 sentiment was getting strong okay we are coming back will the economy become stronger uh, sentiments were saying whether the loans can be uh, easily readily given all those things was going on and suddenly there was a total stop to it so now we are starting back from zero so and of course a lot of things have been said over the last uh, uh, many uh, uh, weeks uh, saying that uh, the market will go down by this percentage that percentage and so on and so forth I think as far as residential, as you know, out of the three hundred twenty-eight thousand transactions, sixty percent of the transactions are residential. So that comes to one hundred and ninety-seven thousand transactions that that uh, have taken place in two zero one nine, which is the which is the biggest size of the market compared to commercial, commercial and industrial. And and you can't run away from the fact that residential will remain the the most significant uh, uh, sector of the market. and and uh, we think it will, it will it will continue to grow the question is how much will it grow and what will the immediate effect be uh, our our discussion we just did a recent survey I, I, i'm not to discuss survey but overall the general sentiment is the market is going to pick up general sentiment of course it comes from down from the 20000 negotiators who are out there uh, we were assembling around approximately 500 the sentiment is the market is going to pick up but having said that i want to i just want to mention that uh right now because the sentiment is down because of the fact that the economy has stopped and now it's starting businesses have been down loss of money loss of income no way is it going to pick up tomorrow and say oh we're going to do better i think there is going to be an adjustment you cannot run away from it uh there will be an adjustment and this, this adjustment is going to be directly related to supply and demand they say a lot of people are going to sell the property and there's going to be a lot of buyers going to go and grab all these and a lot of activities are going to happen again we do not know because property prices have come down uh, to a point in in 2019 when 2019 and i don't think it should go further but if it goes further i think it would the correction will not be that big uh, only thing is now the market has to pick up so question would be in the next few months how much we i think they we can see all this within the next 6 months because transaction have to go on we have to see what the sellers are thinking you know there were some sellers who withdraw their property from the market from our survey they withdraw the property i don't put it in the market 
So if everybody says I want to withdraw, then you can see not much supply. But of course, it may not be the biggest bulk of the whole thing. There are people now who are affected by business. They are definitely going to put up. Uh, we know for a fact that a lot of them are going to go refinance. A lot of them are going to put up the property for sale. How badly they affected will show how badly they want to sell, how much loss they want to take. So all these are really unknown factors. And I think within the next six months, uh, we will know. I don't want to sensationalize and speculate on the percentage because I think none of us are in that position. But I can I can confidently say uh, from what I hear from the market, uh, there would be a slight correction because of the and un- un- uh, uh, we can't see where it is moving. And once the market comes to a point of accepting. What is the norm? What is going to happen? I think it will then start to grow, and I think it will take at least six months for us to see what is going to happen. So it's not all lost, in my opinion. I think those who are very badly affected are those who are overgeared. Those who are badly affected will be those who uh, who need cash now to pump into their business, and and they need cash flow, whatever. So all this will uh, uh, will play a big role in how the residential market is going to move. Just quickly. From what I've heard from my members who are out there, the rental market has picked up very quickly because a lot of people who are wanting the tenancy is expired, they need to move out. So they now got no time to waste time. They need to move out quickly. Uh, people are looking at lower rentals now because of uh, all the problems they are facing. So rentals are picking up, and rentals will go up uh, as quickly as possible. It will, it will, it will, it will drive in the, for the moment. But of course, it is not the main drive in the property market. Then I think followed by the residential market. Okay, Mr. Fu, maybe I can turn to you now. Uh, because of this current system uh, situation, a lot of businesses are are very challenged moving forward. This will definitely affect the SMEs. Definitely affect the business community. Where do you see the demand for resident? Uh, sorry, for commercial units and also for industrial space. What do you think is going to be the immediate uh, outcome of this COVID? Uh, MCO and CMCO situation, Mr. Fu. For the office market, uh, I, what you have experienced at the moment, uh, uh, there's so many negativities story about oversupply situation. So there's no different uh, whether with COVID or no COVID. We already experienced a situation of oversupply situation in the office. Uh, as it stand today, I think we have more than 115 million square feet of uh, building space uh, in the Greater Klang Valley, uh, which occupancy rate hovering around just uh, in the region of about 80 over percent. So during this uh, COVID-19 period, uh, our the, uh, the entire activity is just like what Soma saying that. In uh, uh, the situation is uh, like in hibernation, so meaning in everybody in the sleep mode at the moment, uh, there won't be any major movement in terms of either sale or or even leasing activity. So, but what we can see generally, I think every most of the tenant would be uh, 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 writing to the landlord and negotiating probably for a rental review uh, for at least during the. Uh, Either uh, MCO period or CMCO period. So these are the the, the, the thing that moving forward. Now on the uh, uh, retail, uh, this has been suffering way before COVID nineteen. We have seen, uh, I think, the due to the everybody try to avoid the crowded places. We have seen the sale uh, in the shopping mall, the footfall have dropped tremendously, uh, even before the COVID uh, have been declared a pandemic. So uh, again, uh, on the of uh, purpose, uh, on the shopping mall moving forward, these are something very challenging. Uh, you will see a lot more tenant will be looking at very much short term uh, uh, rental leasing, looking at very much on uh, no longer a conventional uh, pure rental base. We will be looking at the turnover rental basis model and so forth. So and uh, a lot more. I think the uh, shopping mall will be completely having different experience in terms of shopping, uh, social distancing. The, the cost of doing business will be a lot more expensive. Uh, but the on the other side of the coin, uh, uh, this is uh, the the uh, the darling of the industry. That uh, something that uh, I have been saying for the last three to four years. 
these are the, indu the industrial area, logistics, even for data center. These are the areas that have been doing pretty well and uh, continue to do well even during the MCO period. Uh, you see a lot more demand on the e-commerce. Uh, the last mile delivery logistics center required a lot more space. Uh, even for data center, I think officers are now uh, looking for space to store their data, their their file in the uh, cloud base. So the data center has been uh, a lot more demand. So this area has been, I see the positive note. Uh, so it's not all negativity during this period. You you have an area where uh, have been uh, doing pretty pretty well in terms of uh, demand and the inquiry level. Great, thank you so much, Mr. Fu. <clears throat> uh, I think very sage comments and uh, very safe ones as well because um, I do know of uh, many, many companies that have been asking for rental reductions from landlords, commercial landlords and not all, always meeting the positivity of being together. I know that some of the landlords have um, counted on a revenue stream that's supposed to be generated and this is causing a bit of friction. Uh, in terms of the residential units, I know that uh, negotiations do happen, particularly amongst investors and because I guess the volumes are, the values are a bit lower, there's a bit more flexibility but for commercial, I've seen there's a bit of a challenge uh, so far. Uh, Mr. Oi, I just wanted to touch base with you hmm. with regard to the designs of where the present design layout of say residential office space or even commercial units and how is that a helped or is it helping the present situation and can it be catered towards the new normal that happens where social distancing needs to come into place? How will design then be affected? Can, you, can I just have your thoughts on that? I think in terms of design, definitely now is uh, everybody on the survival mode. They will try to reuse whatever existing uh, premises of the place that do business to cater for the SOP and the requirements. But sooner or later, maybe after two or three months later, maybe some of the big corporations like Office One, they might want to more commonly reducing their size. I would say the demand of Office might come back onto the smaller spaces, but they choose a location. that the right location that close to their house or close to their people. Maybe for the interior design, we still have the possibility to have jobs like that to coming in. And I will see also some of the reconfiguration of the existing uh, uh, business premises, like their restaurant, whatever they need to do that kind of social distancing and also like take away counter will be more implemented and all this they might need all the designers input to get it more precise rather than keep the space empty and it look very unsafe even the place is open for dining might be a, a lot of creativity invention to have that uh, in mind about uh, hygiene and so on so in terms of, uh, I will see from the ID point of view, uh, there are still a lot of modification work that need to be done to the existing premises. You know? Like even the entering to the shopping mall to make a, a, a sanitizing station, look it more nicely and so on. I think people still want to look forward to something that's uh, in terms of creative, how to solve all this. You know? And uh, with the technology come in, I think like to get your identity scanned and so on to make it very precise for the design point of view. For us, I think a lot of uh, potential in terms of new ideas to come up. You know? And uh, I said, for until people have, have been stabilized, maybe then this sort of thing will, will, will be in demand if the COVID is still around. Mr. Ui, do you see that with the new normal per se, where there's an enhanced, um, uh, enhanced knowledge or enhanced worry now, about social safety and uh, personal safety for that effect. Do you see even the way people carry out their lifestyle be very different and therefore the needs of the space that they occupy will also be very different. Uh, give you an example, a lot of businesses have said that they've moved on to digital. Those have actually adopted the digital side. Uh, okay, they're still doing transactions. So do you see that a lot of homes that are being used as home offices will also need to have different configurations to succeed. Uh, even for offices per se, they have to think of the digitization and therefore the configuration is also going to be uh, different requirements as well. Yeah, I think definitely uh, home, they are already experiencing after by no other choice by lockdown at home and still on the, on the surviving mode, they still have to move and progress their work and they are very comfortable now, I think, with the, with the, with the way of work now. So I think in terms of that, uh, definitely uh, there were a lot of depend on the kind of digital to, to, 
do all the businesses and the operation. So I think that's a part of it. Eventually, even like I said, ourselves here, we are actually we are originally we are not comfortable on this type of uh, like a, a video conferencing or sharing ideas. So we want to be face to face as a creative line. Now I think with a one one or two months, we have no choice. We still have to progress our work. We still have to do the brainstorming and so on. And we get used to it. And if we also see the productivity. Sometimes, even certain extent, we have leave more free hand for for the for our staff or generation to 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 to, to progress. Well, we see there's a different result. Actually, not too bad. To be honest, in overall. Great, gentlemen. I just want to throw the question now to the three of you. Uh, and we'll take it. Whoever wants to answer first can answer first. Who do you think are the biggest losers in this particular situation? Losers by means of uh, the industries that cannot move on. What do we need? What uh, what their spaces that they're occupying can be transformed towards? Uh, what are who are the biggest winners? So on both extremes, we have the losers and the winners moving forward. And how does that affect the work that you guys do? And I throw that into the middle and see who wants to take that first. Uh, I think generally uh, looking at the uh, sector in uh, overall, I think it's a uh, it's a no uh, brainer to say that uh, is uh, anybody know that the hospital the sector in the impact of the epidemic uh, COVID nineteen is in relation to uh, human interaction. So in the industry that re- that uh, involve a lot of human interaction. That is the one that impacted. So if you draw the line and looking at the crowd, the area that require a lot of crowd, uh, a lot of traffic, a lot of football is the uh, retail industry, the theme park. We are looking at. We are looking at uh, even hospitality, hotel, tourism, and so forth. So this area are uh, badly impacted by by this and. Uh, But uh, I I would like to look into positive part of it as well, uh, Ernest. I think even for me, I think in terms of tourism, I think uh, there's a lot of negativity about the news of so many hotels have been closed down. Today, uh, another uh, uh, legendary hotel by uh, Park Royal will be shutting down. Uh, It's a very sad situation. But uh, to me, I think Malaysia is... uh, uh, have been uh, depending a lot in terms of the uh, uh, GDP on the, the uh, hospitality stream uh, and uh, not for uh, no reason. I think there must be a reason why we are doing well. So to me, the COVID-19 would not take away this uh, completely because the way I look at it in, in this industry, I would like to share this, this slide. Uh, we still have a lot of potential. I believe this may like what uh, Soma is saying. A question of six months uh, for the in, for the residential to bounce back, but perhaps for the tourism industry may take much longer. But we will not lose. Not not we can't compete. We are still have a beautiful nature beaches. We still have uh, our culture and so forth. We will not lose any of this because of COVID. So I'm am very very positive. They will bounce back. They may be a loser now, but they may bounce back. So. If you look into my chart, I also mentioned about some of other industry that I think would be a, a potential loser. You're talking about education because uh, maybe about 25% of uh, the industry is depending on the foreign uh, student coming in. So that would be definitely impacted in terms of the, uh, the education industry. Uh, aviation, for everybody know about it. But uh, uh, looking at the positive side of it, uh, our, that we need to probably looking at uh, how are we going to uh, probably uh, rejuvenate our agriculture sector, the modernization of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, machinery to be heavily used, commercial farming and so forth. We still have a very land mass base that required for the agriculture. Uh, of course, the e-commerce and uh, the uh, other uh, I mentioned about our district. Uh, we are also blessed that we have the probably world class uh, medical facility and the talent. So this is something that we are able to probably move uh, uh, much faster ahead of uh, our state in uh, this region. So uh, my take would be this are the, the industry definitely will be a potential winner. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Mr. Fu. 
Um, Mr. Soma, any follow-up to that? Because I also wanted to share uh, the recent feedback by NAPIC that the property prices that seem to be moving are the ones that are uh, 400,000 and below. So again, the winners and losers based on those industries that Mr. Fu had shared earlier, uh, where all the people are working at, where do you think, uh, who's going to be the winner and losers? Would it be closer to the offices now? Because it may not necessarily be uh, the office that I'm close to right now is the place that I'll buy because I, there may not be an office to go to. I mean, can, I may be able to work from home. I can live anywhere right now as long as there's a good Wi-Fi line. That's what I, mean. I, I think we are, we are all getting into this excitement. There's a new the word new normal. I, I somehow or other don't get excited with the word new normal. I remember when I was young and I was using the old telephone that you know where you circle it and all that. And then and, the, and then you got a new the handphone, the record tie and all that. It was a new norm at that time. There's a new normal normal thing, but doing differently. Technology has changed and it was a new normal. Suddenly somebody came out with a new normal and we all get excited. Everything is a new normal. I go to the supermarket with the same thing, only thing social distancing. You know, it's I really I really do not see a, a real change in our habits and the way we do things. But because there was some new rule there, we use the word new normal. Okay, fine. So, like example, everybody says, Oh, everybody now is going to stay at home and work. You think so? I don't want to stay at home and work. Because I realized when I stay home and work, I really cannot put in that concentration and that effort because suddenly I need to go and boil the, my wife boil the water. I need to go and switch off the, you know, the thing. So, it's so end of the day, the new, the younger generation would prefer to be sitting anywhere like they used to those days sit in the Starbucks and work out of the office. That generation will go through. The new generation will go through. But I think our generation, I think Fujian also would not like to work from his office. I don't know whether he agrees with me. I mean, from his home. For 50 days, I don't know what they were doing. So another day, if them, hey, what is where is the productivity? I can't handle. I can't manage it. So this thing about working from home, yes, it can happen, but that will depend on the type of industry they are in, uh, uh, and the type of business they are in. When you talk about the winners and the losers, I think when I talk about the real estate sector. I think the biggest the right now, the developers are really badly hit. They cannot construct. They already sold the unit. There's going to be late delivery. Uh, contract the workers are now affected and I was at a meeting with the Ministry of Finance yesterday they are really badly affected and you know uh, the developers are uh, a very very strong force in driving the economy because they support so many industries um, uh, so this will be affected but uh, you, you said something about NAPI just now uh, when you talk about 400,000 I think that the lower income group will be affected now because I, I heard I heard somewhere need to be verified 2 million jobs have been lost Two million are huh? uh, going to be. They are going to lose, or they already have lost. I heard two point five the other day. Let's put at two million. Who are these people who lost two, uh, the two million who have lost the job? I think most of them predominantly will be between the the M forty. I think it, or, or, or the, the the lower the the the, the B forty and the M forty. I think those who got money, are those who are able to take care of themselves. I think there's no issue with them. There's no issue with them. I think they will be fair. So now, if you ask me, where is the sales going to come from? I think I think that that range will be very badly affected because now they are, they got less money, or they are down. Okay, let let talk about people who have got pay cut uh, to uh, between ten to thirty percent. I, uh, I heard from whatever range. So they got low salary. How are they going to go and uh, uh, get a house or, or service a loan? They are not sure about how their life is going to be in the next six or seven months. So I think that 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 group will be further affected now. And I think those uh, those who got money, uh, probably above 500,000 and all that, I think they will continue as long as they are uh, gainfully employed. I think that that will not be a problem. So that's what I foresee. Ms. Oi, do you have a view in terms of who would be the winners and losers in this particular situation? I think for the loser, like Mr. Uh, not so Mr. What, Mr. Fu has been talking, the people have dealt with mass public. People like event organizer, exhibition, you no, know, a lot of event that cannot take place, and of course, uh, like cinema, you know, all we, we need to have the mass start of our businesses that uh, will be affected definitely. You know? uh, and uh, thing for the winner, basically, like also mentioned on the e-commerce, digital, and I would say some people have training on the digital and so on. There will be a a, a big plus for them as a winner because they, they don't need to go for the 
big space or event organized, they organize on back banner and so on. So their, their cost is very low and uh, their, their, their income, they don't mind the income they're low, but they still have that. I think the person who have very uh, tech savvy people will be get very as a, as a big winner for time from because it's less contact. No? Of course, another thing is a very essential uh, supply people like physic, uh, pharmaceutical people and, and medicals. I think that's, that's a big winner for me. Okay, I, I think Mr. we lost you for the last sentence uh, a little bit. If you mind uh, repeating it, that'd be great. No, I said the, the bigger winner can be more on the essential business. That's a necessary unit. No? That's I think they still continue as usual. And of course, uh, for to make it more effective, they have to change fast to become more on the e-commerce. Uh, this, you know, some of the the person that who can change very fast to adapt to digital, I think they will win. Even the person who sell uh, a hawker or even a, 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 a street food, but they, they must transform. I think for this time round, they have to be fast enough to open up their possibility that uh, they can do that. Yeah? Then definitely on deliver business, I think it's huge. Demand is a big winner you know, for especially all the logistics and, and all kind of uh, delivery service. Okay. That, it sounds to me that uh, what Mr. Oi was mentioning, Mr. Fu, a lot of the businesses that have been uh, pre fixed within the dimensions or the design that is currently there, or especially retail, commercial, industrial, uh, leaving in aside industrial for storage particularly for the e-commerce business like warehousing. I'm talking about office units in uh, retail space. Do you see an upsurge in a lot of redevelopment work for them to repurpose fit them for the new, well, not what Mr. Soma said, the new normal is really not a new normal, but for the new business that will be because um, retail as is, people will not necessarily want to go to the shopping malls uh, in mass right now, but they still have to evolve in order to have their businesses and continue their businesses. Do you see a lot of that going to be happening very soon, Mr. Fu? The changing lifestyle, the changing demands, the changing habits of people? Okay, I think the we are looking at the dimension now of the almost most of the sector have been experienced oversupply situation. Okay, uh, residential, you have an overhang situation. Uh, we need to be, uh, as what uh, Mr. Ui mentioned just now, I think we have to really look into a lot of re-adaptation of how we're going to move forward in this new norm. Okay, uh, though Mr. Soma Sondra mentioned that he don't believe in that, uh, I have a uh, differing view on this. Uh, I, I believe, I think, moving forward, uh, there would be a lot, a lot of new changes taking place. Uh, the, ch the only thing certain as what people say is change. So we have no choice but continue uh, to re-adapt ourselves. In terms of space utilization, uh, the worried sign today in Malaysia is not about over overhang situation only. Uh, the situation uh, uh, actually maybe wasn't with the low utilization of space. You look, for example, if you walk around any of the, even in the housing estate, you have uh, shop houses that have been built for the last 20 years. If you look up, apart from the ground floor, the upper floor are technically empty, right? So the actual utilization rate is very low. Now, those are very things that uh, the, we need to, to really change, to really why we move and convert into some of this space into more uh, uh, residential create a lot more activity rather than we have to move into so far away 20 uh, those days we are traveling 20 kilometers are acceptable nowadays some of uh, the unfortunate uh, generation have to travel almost one and a half hour to reach Kuala Lumpur so it's like going to Malacca Right, so this is uh, unfortunate. A lot of time has been wasted uh, on the road. Rather, more uh, effective work either you can be a lot more at home to be with your family, quality time, or to put more time to be effective use. But uh, the situation we are facing today, there's a lot of space that need to readapt. To me, uh, we have to change. Right, if it's a demand like office building have been empty for uh, so long. Uh, maybe we can get Mr. Ui to come in to, to redesign that space into 
uh, that uh, to complement the rest of the office building. Perhaps if there is a need for logistic, last mile delivery, if you cannot get renter, uh, then why don't you rent it as a, a, a warehouse for logistic for last mile delivery in the city center, right? And time like now, like Soma saying, renter has been uh, been upsurge at the moment. Uh, there must be a reason why renter is upsurge. Perhaps because people are no longer have the deep pocket to buy. Alternative to, to own will be to rent. Perhaps this uh, uh, we can re-adapt this some of the space uh, for communal living. Uh, of course, with the uh, uh, concern about uh, social distancing to rent. Uh, and you, you rent must be very basic, right? So what you need is the roof. You need a four wall and roof over your head. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, ID people like Mr. Ui and the uh, ID people will be there to assist how to really re-adapt this space to more utilize uh, the space is already there. So what we need to do is to improve and uh, to, to utilize this space. Mr. Soma, uh, what about you in terms of you mentioned just now that rentals probably will go up because probably people are looking at where are the better deals later on or to make sure that their incomes could be more stable so that before they buy and I'm sure there's still opportunities to buy if they're available. What would your advice be to these individuals then? Should they consider now is the time or should they say, oh, let's, let's let it wait for a little while, let's say six months, 12 months and then we decide? What's your advice? It all depends on the individual. I mean, if I got the money and a good buy comes along, probably this is the best time to buy because uh, right now, you know, we've seen the property market going round, down to where, to the pit, as I told you, in 2017 is picked up and it's all right at the bottom. And, and I don't think uh, it will really go down much further. So probably they can give themselves a couple of months to see where the market is heading. But right right now would be a good time to consider or, or do your research to see where they want and, and also wait for a good buy. A lot of people will call and say, hey, can you, good buy, can you call and uh, tell me and then I'll buy. La. But good buys don't wait, okay. There are 100 plus probably meeting with me. If, if it comes to me, I'll give it to the first guy. If it takes it, that's it. So you need to work with an agent and say, listen, I'm really looking for a good buy, whether it's a commercial, industrial or residential. You need to put yourself there and you probably need to call the agent every other day to say this. So that is one way. The rental market will continue to grow. I think it will grow further because as what uh, uh, Mr. Fujian has said just now, um, a lot of people may now because of the, the business, uh, because they are not their business is not good or because of the fact that uh, they are not doing well, they would say probably this is what I need to do. Rent first. I, after all, I need a shelter. Actually, a, a, good, a good story to talk about, uh, a home was the best savior for us when we were all under MCO. That provided the shelter and all the comfort and everything. So, so nothing like having a shelter overhead, of course, when you own it. So um, uh, that will change a bit. I think a lot of people are going to the rental market and as time goes along, it will change. I think there's a lot of talk going on in the market right now, even with the ministry, KBKT talking about rent to own. That is something that will be uh, really good if it can be implemented. Uh, we have got some schemes, but all that is not really working very well. But if the government can come and introduce a good rent to uh, purchase scheme, I think that will do well. Um, uh, as far as investments are concerned, residential, uh, anytime right now is a good time to buy. But I would just say, don't rush into it. Just wait for a couple of months, see what is happening. And after that, you really probably could, could go in and, and invest. Okay. Ms. Wing, uh, any thoughts? Sorry, sorry, Mr. Fu, go ahead. Okay, uh, and just I, I add in to what uh, Soma mentioned. Uh, I, I'm looking into the, uh, uh, apart from residential, talking about investment, property, capital, uh, market, and so forth. Uh, now, the question of whether this is the right time to buy. Uh, in fact, this is opportunity time to buy. I, I'm not saying this is a good time to buy. I say this is opportunity time to buy. Looking at the corporate deal that we have been working, we have not seen for the last many, many years. There are many uh, real estate investment property of choice, of choice, I'm saying, right, are not available then. This is the time they are made available. You name it, just like a five-star hotel, you name it, some of these are not available then. So not only that, you're looking at some of the 
pocket land that available, choice location land and so forth. These are the time that perhaps for you to look into a, a, a opportunity time to look and not only looking at the, uh, a deal which is just because of the price has gone down. To me, you don't buy low, you always buy high. And this is a time that right time for you because these are the property are not available during the good time. It's available now. So opportunity time. Uh, I, I, can I just add on to this? Sorry, yeah, I missed this just now. The new projects uh, is something that we should relook look again. I know a lot of people looking at the uh, new properties. A lot of developers are not that they're very motivated to sell. Uh, I know on one project recently, they said they will give you a cash back of 150,000 uh, by the time it's completed, you know, so, so that's really good. They're giving good discounts and good packaging and uh, covering all the uh, legal fees and all that. So it is another sector that I think everybody should look at because right now there are some good buys out there. I, I think I quite agree with Fu, it's an opportunity to buy as the person that they, are, they have the spare cash because now is even a good time to do renovation apparently they still need to do renovation of their house is this a good time because they are very competitive and a lot of uh, suppliers a lot of contractors they did job and they can get a i think they will get a good deal you no know? and uh, is a is a is a is a place is a time for the person who have cash you not know, want to do even the expansion of business i think is a good time if somebody need bigger warehouse bigger more production for essential product or this is a is a good time to look around, around as it, you know? And I could agree with uh, Fu, we have to really creatively look in the over supply space. What could we use them? Even some can, there's a lot of uh, very unfortunate uh, so-called profession like artists and so on. They don't, they, they, they could find some place for putting their work like gallery or anything. Maybe some of these shop lot or even offices that can convert to this kind of premises for them as an exhibition area, gallery and so on. So we can look at the, this, uh, this group of people that apparently they can't enjoy this kind of space. Now is the time for them to come back, you know, seeing there's an oversupply. So that's an uh, additional like, facility to use the shop floor above, maybe second floor to become residential. You know? Also very good, we're promoting more working. It's, it depends how you sell. You know? And I can see also recently a lot of even the first floor, uh, so called the shop lots turn to become retail space. You know? And it's basically is people start getting away, somebody start it, you know? and, and it, it will it will it will become a trend. Okay, I think Mr. Ui's one is frozen. But to add to what you were saying, Mr. Ui, uh, in, in Hong Kong I remember going to a restaurant and the restaurant is a uh, one star Michelin and it's on the first floor. Yes, correct. It's not even on the ground floor. Yeah. Besides so I think when the when the space is really expensive, then people become creative. Gentlemen, in the dying uh, closing seconds, uh, I just wanted to tap well, probably one last question, and this one was not sent to you guys yesterday, so I'm pretty sure you guys didn't have this. But I wanted to ask you, number one, personally, are you guys looking to buy? Anybody? I know that you say it's a good time, but personally, is this something that you yourself are looking to buy? Of course, I mean, I mean, that's that's a that's a wrong question to ask estate agents. Okay, of course, if, they, if there's a there's a good buy that comes along and that's within your means, of course, you will buy. You see, uh, so that's definitely uh, in our mind. Uh, we are looking forward to some good deals that will come along, uh, and of course, when good deals come along, also we'll pass on to our friends. First of all, we'll pass on to our friends and good clients that we have. So then we will do that. But just to just to uh, uh, conclude uh, to what I wanted to add. I was with the Ministry of Finance and KPKT yesterday. They met up with us and, and they're seriously interested to recover the property market. And they got views from all of us how we can we can improve it. Radar was also there, Master Builders and also uh, uh, they're also there and, and, and CIBD. So we gave them all the suggestions and, and, and as how we can prep up the property market. So I would say that in the next few months, uh, the government is definitely going to go and, and push the for the recovery of the property market. Because property market really supports a great part of the economy. So that's going to happen. So before all that happens, any good buys come, grab it. But Mr. Soma, sorry, just to add on to that. I mean, the your supply side, uh, even though if everybody comes on board, where's the financing? Financing is there right now. Okay, talk about financing. 
I, I uh, one of my my friends in in real estate got bought a property and he and he got a loan and he paid three point the interest is three point five percent. The interest is a loan now. This is the time you should take advantage is uh, advantage opportunistic market now take advantage of it. So loans are still being given and the banks will give loans because right now they are also affected. So they need to give loans, but of course they won't blindly close their eyes. So we have now even requested can can we now get away with the seventy percent. Cap for the third home. Take away the cap. Uh, can we increase the margin of finance to those first-time home buyers? Um, uh, interest rate, of course, is already low. So these are some of the suggestions we made. And if the bank bank Nagara accepts it and says this can help in the recovery of the property market, definitely it's going to help the property market. But the oversupply again, I, I, I don't know. Maybe uh, Fujian will be able to uh, add on to this. It is the oversupply is in the new properties division, the new property sector. They they build and then they couldn't sell. There's an oversupply, but there's no there's no such thing as an oversupply in terms of secondary market. Every house is for sale. It's for sale. So we always get caught with the new properties where the developers have got unsold units, and then we say, oh, there's an oversupply, and we put the whole market into the basket and say we have an oversupply situation. Secondary secondary market. Uh, if if anybody, I, I'm not very clear. Secondary market basis in the residential sector, the, the new properties are is in the ratio of uh, approximately seventy to thirty percent, seventy to thirty, seventy uh, percent secondary market, thirty percent new properties, twenty to thirty percent, seventy to eighty on this side. So actually, the 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 the, the entire real estate industry is supported on, on residential, out of which. Seventy percent is approximately uh, secondary market, not the new properties. Right. Okay. Mr. Fu. Okay. And as, uh, I'll make an attempt to answer your first question: whether am I in the mode of buying? Uh, I say yes, uh, as always. But the strategy during this time perhaps will be different from what the normal norm going to be. I think in the normal norm. Previously, when you look into buying strategy, you always uh, put into two categories. Priority, looking at uh, the growth in terms of capital acquisition as your main driver for your investment objective. Now, yield play always comes secondary. Now, we turn the clock back with COVID-19 and post-COVID-19. Perhaps my strategy would change now. Would be very much of yield play rather than growth in terms of appreciation. So I still will be buying, but I'll be driving with the fundamental, which is looking at yield drive rather than capital appreciation drive. Great, thank you, <laughs> Mr. Oi. I think be buying? it is a. Uh, time right now is basically opportunity for you to choose. We really come come by one property that's uh, you're on the pipeline on your planning. I think you you have to continue to buy. This is the best time to be honest. No, and for myself, we're talking about really come across the uh, the criteria meet my need, especially looking for more location. That is right. Yeah, I think I will buy because it's a it's a it's a buyer time now. No. And uh, I think a lot of people are for selling, and they want to sell in low cost to you. I think that's that, that's my sense. Hmm. Uh, okay, Mr. Fu. Uh, sorry, Mr. Oi. I also lost your last sentence. <laughs> yeah, I said, I said this. I said this is the best time to buy because there, uh, uh, now is a buyer time. Uh, okay. Rather, rather than a uh, selling time, seller time, you know. In yeah. everything, yeah. almost in everything. Yes, market. <laughs> market. Yeah. Well, similarly, um, also just a last closing thoughts. Uh, there's actually a lot of interesting uh, sharing sessions on social media uh, that talks about how one can extract a lot of cash by buying a lot of properties right now, and hold the cash to buy something else. So, i.e., uh, stack loans or compressed loans per se. Gentlemen, just for the benefit of the first time home buyers who are exposed to all of this, any thoughts on? Getting involved in this? Yes, just watch out for property gurus. That suddenly the the, the the dead property gurus are going to come back into the market and tell you all kinds of things. I know of a fact that even even a couple of days ago, I was told and I'm aware 
that there's a bulk purchase and the bulk purchase they already negotiated low down price and all kinds of things will happen this is also an opportunistic market for a lot of people to make money out of you go and work with real estate agents who are certified go and see them talk to them they are, they cheat you at least you got a recourse uh, don't go and deal with all these illegal brokers who are going to come and make a fuss bug out of you uh, and be careful because uh, now is now is also the good time to make the fuss bug out of anybody and so be just be wise do your work research prepare yourself before you go into the property market okay mr fu yeah Uh, I completely agree with uh, Soma. Uh, we are not a property guru. We are not Maha guru. Uh, I'm not even Sifu. <laughs> My name is Fu, not Sifu. Uh, so uh, let's look into this thing. Uh, nothing can. Uh, uh, there's no free lunch. Uh, you need to do your homework, uh, as what Soma is saying. Uh, engage with the right people. A registered real estate agent. Uh, don't part away your money uh, uh, freely just like that. Do your homework, get the right advice, and so forth. Right. So uh, the the danger of this property guru is uh, I I just uh, relate that to during my discussion with Bank Negara. Uh, can you imagine if I were to buy a property trust worth one thousand ringgit? Uh, the the so called certified uh, uh, financial planner have to give me a a, a 15 minute briefing of uh, the boxes to take to analyze my can you imagine some of these people just parting away million of their ringgit their life saving without really check doing all the necessary checking so listen to soma do the right thing do your homework and uh, check and look behind you how much money you have uh, what is your the the, the uh, liability you have so uh, there's no such thing as you can buy 10 property when uh, you are uh, uh, without uh, coming out with single cent all this are, are, are rubbish thank you i'm not okay. sure if you're opposed to this or not mr oi <laughs> yeah, I, i fully agree of both i think you have to do the homework nobody going to bring money for you Unless you want to buy certain property, but for your own use, this is a good time. That you do your survey, you do your study, you do your your financing and so on. Not not on whatever have on the on the internet is talking about. No investment package and so on. I don't think so. Great. With that, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for sharing with us your thoughts on post COVID and post CMCO. What your views are, and also with regard to whether this time is a good time to buy, and I'm very encouraged to listen and hear you guys say that the fundamentals is very important. Always do your homework, always check, and always deal with the correct people for the information. Whether it's for interior design, not uh, someone who's just doing interior decoration, and real estate agents, please make sure that you check for that tag because if it's not tagged, don't do it. Right, this one, this one, <laughs> this is the tag. <laughs> Yeah, and of course, if you're looking at uh, industrial or retail or uh, anything else of sort, same thing. You still have to deal with branded companies that actually have the tags that actually have all the registrations in place. So, with that, ladies, gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. So, gentlemen, thank you again so much for your time, and I look forward to our next catch up. Yeah, we'll catch you. Did you say a month? <laughs> yes, one month from now we'll do another recap, and um, we'll see whether the information that we shared today has any relevance to the next month. How about that? That'd be great. Okay, do that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.